G'day folks, Ziggity here with some more Star Valor. If you're watching this when I put it up, then the next Path of Exile expansion launches in several days, a game near and dear to my heart, which I'll always play updates for when they arrive. As such, I've decided to cap off the Star Valor content for now with a look at how I've set up and been running the Hephaestus, an awesome ship which I designed in collaboration with the developer Laos. It's only available through a secret hidden quest, so if you missed how to get it, check out the previous video in this series. In total I've got about 18 hours in this save, and I have a lot more I still want to do, but that'll have to wait for now. The Hephaestus was designed to bring broadside combat to Star Valor in a big way, but this game offers a lot of customization of ships, so feel free to experiment and find a way that you like to play. It's a very powerful ship, but it does come with a downside. You will often attract more powerful enemies. As this is a sought after one of a kind ship, the game's difficulty will ramp up when you fly it, and you'll see more silver and gold star enemies hunting you down. When you're poorly equipped, they can be quite dangerous, and they'll get in the way of you doing other things that you're trying to do. The upside however is that you get a lot more loot and XP on a frequent basis. It comes to you, like a little delivery. Basically, expect to be ambushed constantly when flying this ship. It comes with an array of passive bonuses, though the most important one to note is that large weapons, size 4 and up, get a big 20% damage bonus. So, where possible, avoid stacking many small weapons and instead craft or equip fewer, larger weapons. The Hephaestus has a starting weapon capacity of 20 slots, which lets you fill every limited slot with 3 space left over to put a wildcard weapon on the spinal mount. My preferred order of importance to equip is the top turrets, the broadsides, then the rear turret, and then the spinal mount last. This does mean that when you scale up weapon capacity with perks, you can put bigger and bigger weapons in the spinal mount. Eventually I think you can end up with a size 11 weapon possibly on the spinal mount. The three point defense turrets have a size limit of three each. Crafting long range point defense weapons and crewing them with skilled gunners will go a long way towards keeping you alive from both missiles and small but dangerous enemies like shuttles which can be a bit hard to hit with bigger weapons. I try to crew these slots with gunners with range increases in particular, and also heat management as the main bonuses wherever possible. You'll notice a big difference between poor aim gunners and good aim gunners, though that said, point defense laser beams are a bit easier and a bit more forgiving on the turret gunners than uh, regular projectile style ones. They have a bit of an easier time connecting with missiles in particular, as the missiles will often cross the beam even if the turret gunner is kind of missing a little bit. The main focus slot of the ships is of course the broadsides, it's what I designed the ship entirely all around. These have a unique effect on the weapons that are slotted into them. Anything you put in there gains 50% projectile speed, but loses 60% damage, however it gets multiplied by 8 shots, done as 2 volleys of 4. So basically it miniaturizes your weapon a bit, and then it copies it across 8 slots. You can do some very ridiculous things with this if you want to. Since you can only really have one side facing an enemy at a time, I set up the Hephaestus like this. Fast missiles on one side, and then charged burst railguns on the other. That way you can always be bringing your full firepower to bear on the enemy. You can have a gunnery crew auto-fire the broadside missiles for you, while you focus on bringing those actual broadside cannons or railguns to bear. It's set up one shots, stations, and some nasty ships, and it can do very well against groups of enemies thanks to Railgun's piercing effect, though it can be hard to land shots against small, fast targets. Once you craft some good weapons for the point defense turrets, these smaller targets become much less of a threat. I use the explosion mod on my crafted Railguns as well, which works really well with them because each time a piercing shot hits an enemy, it triggers an explosion so you can have a lot of explosions overlapping in an area. I crew the guns with the unique crewmate version of myself for the explosion boosting effect, though I certainly don't let him auto fire them, that would be a disaster. On that note, be very careful around allied stations and about blowing yourself up if enemies get too close to the broadside, especially if you're crewing with Ziggy. If you want to negate the risk, you can go for railguns without the explosion mod, but it's far less fun in my opinion. Another nice upside of this is that exploding railguns on the broadside make for a pretty decent mining setup actually. I haven't had to use mining lasers since I equipped these. Now when you really want these charging railguns to do some damage, you want to start getting some flux as well. 
Flux charges can be consumed to boost the damage of charged weapons by a large amount, 83% on my railguns. There are a few different ways of building and using charge, but for slow charged up weapons like this with a long cooldown, I find an upgraded flux capacitor with a flux accumulator to be more than adequate with very little downside. As a side note, spare flux charge can also be used to power an energy barrier, which gives you a hotkey ability to put up a very powerful overshield to absorb damage for a limited time. This is often enough time and damage mitigation to block a really big shot or buy time to repair, recharge your regular shields or simply retreat. Back to weapons though, I craft my railguns something like this. It will instantly overheat of course with these sorts of railguns, but since it's on a really long cooldown, that's more than enough time for the heat to fully dissipate, and it's literally not a problem on this setup. In fact, if it wasn't for having big point defense lasers, I wouldn't even run a heat sink. Again, you can drop explosion if you prefer. It's more direct damage, but less AoE potential. Seek your upgrade kits into these railguns as soon as you can, as it makes a big difference to the damage. For my broadside missiles, speed is a priority, so we craft them as small warheads with a full set of speed boosters. You can either go rapid fire or burst. I prefer burst personally, as it's nice to overwhelm point defense, and I like them a little bit more aesthetically and in terms of sound, but the DPS is actually higher on rapid setups. For reference, my point defense lasers look a little something like this. These were a big upgrade to my ship over the very small piddly little point defense lasers that you tend to loot or buy most of the time in this game. I don't think you'll ever really find point defense lasers like this, so crafting is the go-to. With whatever space you do have left, craft missiles for the spinal mount for a similar reason to the broadside. If you're aiming your railguns, you can't really point your nose at the enemies, so missiles solve this problem with homing. I use a bigger, slower kind of rapid fire missile here, but there's a ton of different ways. You can just add some more burst small missiles, it's really up to you. For combat strategy, against tough enemies I boost away from them, and then I turn around my broadsides to railgun them while they chase me down. If they get too close, you can activate your overshield and railgun them for some damage protection from your own self damage. And if they're a little bit too far away and you want them to group up a bit more, you can tap your brakes a little bit to slow yourself down and let the enemies stack up a little bit more. For stations or less aggressive targets, I tend to sail around in a clockwise fashion to keep my railguns on the right hand side. You let your missiles target hostile enemies automatically using the turret gunner's auto fire, and then you use your railguns on any larger or groups of targets that you can find. If you really like the railguns, and they are super fun, you could put a set of them on each side and then flip flop sides while they're on cooldown. So fire one, spin around, fire the other, spin around, fire the other, and kind of keep up a railgun barrage. It's probably a bit less effective than having the constantly affecting missiles auto firing, but it's probably going to be very fun. Now the crew members in the ship are actually not all that good, I've kind of been slacking a little bit. Apart from Zarenthal who has speed and hull regen. Anything that boosts healing, shields, turning speed and overall speed, these are a big priority on crew. I should probably get to work on finding some better crew members for the rest of the slots. My gunners are at least good. Equipment loadout is super dependent in this game on your tech level and what's available to you and you should always be looking for more space efficient setups and upgrades to tinker with, it's a constant process. That said, overall, turning speed is super important, so get the biggest and best large gyroscopes you can and upgrade them as much as possible. I run two purple Mark IVs and this seems to be quite comfortable. Being fast also helps a lot with dealing with tough bounty hunters that chase you down, so a big upgraded engine and a couple of big speed boosters help a lot. Now speed boosters ramp up your energy needs a lot, so make sure your generation is up to par. I have some pretty decent energy generators here so far, but there's still a lot of room for upgrading. For example, more large Vengi reactors, which if I got those would mean that I would drop some of the other reactors, make some more space, add more shields and things like that. So there's still quite a bit of room for improvement here. Railguns do take a fair bit of energy to charge up and fire, but they're not constantly firing. And since we're not running any large lasers apart from the point defense, our energy generation needs are actually pretty slim on this setup. As such, you can dedicate every ounce of spare power that you have to running bigger shields and bigger shield charges and bigger shield absorbers. Just make sure to test before you get into combat whether you can run your boosters and point defense weapons at the same time. I've made that mistake in the past before because once those point defenses start firing, they are going to drain a decent chunk of power. 
If you're running super lean, then you might notice your battery start to depleting, or you might not notice until things are too late. Eventually, when you can find yourself a decently upgraded option, you should put on some armor to protect against shield piercing Vulcan cannons. Keeping weight down is pretty important, so I opt for lighter armor, and quality upgrades make them lighter while also protecting more. Purple Vengi heavy armor is very strong without being too heavy once upgraded, uh, but there are lighter options if you prefer more speed. Also try and get a repair system as soon as possible and later an advanced repair system. You could run repair drones early on, but repair systems heal you based on a percentage of total armor, so they win out in my opinion. For ship enhancements I run damage resistance for the tier 3 option, though hull regeneration is also a very decent option. Then I run two stacks of weapon range, it's an obscenely high value stat, especially for your point defense lasers. And then either some crit or damage, it doesn't matter too much for the last one. There's overall still a lot of room for improvements in my current setup, even before you start to consider legendary quality gear, but it's already really beastly and it would suit me pretty fine until I could build a Zeus. I'm curious though, if you're running the Hephaestus, how have you kitted it out? It's really interesting to hear and see about how other people have approached using the ship since I designed it and had like a specific goal in mind for it. It's kind of a cute little taste of what being a game developer might be like. Anyway folks, I hope you've enjoyed my look at Star Valor over the past couple weeks. Bios has done a fantastic job getting the game to launch and making it really fun. I'll definitely be checking out future updates and expansions as he brings them out. But that's it for now, I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.